Good day, beloved. This is the Remnant C Bible Study Channel. Today's subject is Jacob's Trouble. Let's get right into this. Now we'll go into uh, Jeremiah 30, uh, verse 7. Alas, for that day has that day is great, so they come, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Now, the time of Jacob's trouble is described in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, and Revelation 2.10 also. This is the tribulation of the Antichrist. There's not any implication of a rapture or a great escape. Uh, in the verses above, uh, before the wrath of God is poured out. The wrath of, of God will only be poured out on the wicked. God does not need to rapture everyone from the earth to accomplish his will on the earth. He can melt the elements with a fervent heat right beside you, and no harm will come unto you. It's the same with uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they were in a fiery furnace that was heated seven times hotter than it needed to be. And actually, uh, fire will have no effect on, on the spirit body when we are changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. The time of Jacob's trouble is before gathering back to Christ and not after. The word saved out of can in no way be rendered raptured out of. The words saved out of are used several times in Jeremiah chapter 30, but there is no way to inject the subject of a rapture into these verses. There is no article for a rapture, and the verses leading up to and away from chapter 30 indicate just the opposite is true, beloved. Below uh, are verses 5 and 6 leading up to verse 7 of Jeremiah 30, that gives a graphic description of a man that is so confused and fearful about the end times that he cannot tell the difference between the bride and the groom in the great wedding. He is actually in, in, examining himself to see if he is pregnant. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I mean, it's like people running around nowadays. They just have no clue of, of how this is how this is going to happen. Now. He cannot, this man that is being spoken of, Jeremiah, is, he can't tell the difference between a spiritual child and a real child because, because he's not studied God's word with understanding. He is in a state of confusion or Babylon. This man cannot tell the difference between the real Christ and the imposter Christ, the spurious Messiah spoken of in 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, the whole chapter of 2 Thessalonians 2. I believe this man is also symbolic for those in the end times who are with spiritual child and giving suck to the works of Satan. They are part of the great whore that sits upon the waters of the end times. The waters are symbolic for people, and the whore is the false church. They are part of the false church that spread the rapture doctrine far and wide. The birth of a new age is also being described in these verses and not a phys physical pregnancy. The birth pangs are getting closer and closer together, beloved. Now, Jeremiah chapter 24 speaks of the parable of the fig tree uh, that Jesus referred to in Matthew 24. From, from Jeremiah uh, chapter uh, 24 forward is a chronological map of the end times that coincides with Mark 20 uh, with Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, and Revelation uh, 2 uh, 10. Jeremiah 35, 30 verse 5. For thus saith the Lord, 
We have, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. And ask ye now, and see whether a man doth, doth travail with child? Uh, wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? This, that, this is mean that people are so fearful about the end times when in reality they shouldn't be fearful at all. Um, it's a glorious time for all Christians. We know the end is near. The time of Jacob's trouble is a description of the events again in Mark 13, Luke 21, Matthew 24, and Revelation 2 that are yet in the future, beloved. They haven't happened yet. Um, this is the time of tribulation of the Antichrist when Christians will be delivered up to death, which is one of the names of Satan. Yep, his name is death. That's simply one of the roles and the names that he plays. At the, end, at the end of the millennium, all of that will be cast into the lake of fire. This is already happening in many parts of the world and will come to America as well. The church in America is in denial and lives in a dream world. The locust armies that are controlled by Satan are accomplishing his, his will even before he is cast out to the earth in person. Persecution is coming to America. Um, the, the book of Jeremiah was written to the tribe of Judah, but also to Jacob, the natural seed, meaning all of the 12 tribes. This also applies to all believers on earth, beloved. Pre-tribulation rapture believers claim that Mark 13, Luke 21, Matthew 24 have already happened to back up the false narrative of the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. Their claims that the temple was completely destroyed by the, by the little uh, ten-horned uh, Roman general Titus in 70 AD are completely in error. First of all, just take a look at the stones that are still standing atop another that were built before 70 AD in Jerusalem. There are many still stacked on top of one another, so this theory is totally false. Just look at the western wall in Jerusalem, and this is where, where all the Jews pray all the time. They stick their prayers in the cracks of those rocks. Um, Christ said that everything would be turned to sand. I don't, those rocks are not sand. Those are, that's awful big sand particles. <laughs> that's crazy. Now, second, in their interpretation of these scriptures, they forget about the words, all the world, just like they do in Revelation 3.10. They forget about those little words, all the world will go through the hour of temptation. And, and again, here we, here we have these words, all the world, as they are, they're used in this verse, especially the word world as it is used here. The entire world was not destroyed when, when uh, Titus marched through Jerusalem. Um, this, this, this guy, uh, this guy uh, Titus, this guy ha hadn't traveled to the rest of the world. And when you look at the meaning of this word world here, it has nothing to do with a regional area, which was uh, the all the area that he conquered. It was only that part of the world. It wasn't the whole world. And you have to make the distinction. And you have to, again, you have to go to the Greek and look at this word world. And that's exactly what we'll do, beloved. Um, now, how do you conquer a world you've never seen? I mean, that, that, that's what they imply here, that, that this, is, this was already accomplished uh, by Titus when it's, it's not even close. He, he just barely conquered uh, the, the region. So let's go into this uh, more here. Mark 13, 1. And as he went out of the temple, one of the disciples said unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here? And Jesus answered, Answering, said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be 
uh, left one stone atop another that shall not be thrown down. The claims that there are no stones left atop another are preposterous. Just look, look for yourself in Jerusalem today. I mean, there are many stones stacked atop one another uh, in, in the, the, the Western Wall. Um, and this, this, uh, this is just nonsense, utter nonsense. All you have to do is just look at, look at that and, it, it, you know, and look at the word world. It's really, it's really a no-brainer, beloved. And these events of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Revelation are yet future to us, and they have not happened yet. The word world has nothing to do with dirt. The word world in Matthew 24, 3, uh, as, as in Matthew 24, 3, and he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came to him privily, Tell us what, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and the end of the world. This is not speaking about Titus, beloved. I got to hammer this. Um, now let's look at this word "world," and it's your Strong's Greek number fifty-five fifty, and it means age, course, eternal, forever, from the same as AI. Uh, Aeon, or AI, properly, and age by extension, perpetuity, also the past by implication, the world, especially a Jewish uh, a messianic period, um, and age, of course, eternal, forever, ever, you know, does this describe um, Titus? I'm sorry. Now, and, and you got many derivatives of this world, uh, this word world, uh, and you got the word chronos, and it's basically the same thing. Uh, and eon, it, it's a span of time, it has nothing to do with a region. Okay? Now, there's no reference to the end of the earth or terra firma, just this earth age. These events are yet still in the future and are about to come to pass. Now, here's another reference to the word world in the Strong's Concordance, and it's number 165, uh, and it's eon, aeon, eon, a space of time. It's, it's almost the exact same thing, okay? Um, now, the events described in Jeremiah chapter 30 are in no way speaking of a great escape, but rather a going through with the help of Almighty God. Uh, uh, the events in Mark 13, Matthew 24, and Luke 21, Revelation 2 are speaking of being delivered up and not flying away in rapture, as these modern-day false teachers claim. Revelation chapter 2 speaks of Jacob's trouble and has nothing to do with flying away. For none of those things with, which thou shalt suffer, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days." Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. You know, does the above verse sound like a rapture? Uh, I don't think so. The words delivered up do not mean flying away. Here's what Jesus says about being delivered up below. Matthew 24, 9. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and, ye sh and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my sake. Now, this is talking about Christians, beloved. They're not gone in a rapture, okay? <laughs> and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another, but take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils and the synagogues. You shall be beaten and you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. Now, again, these are Christians. These are not non-Christians. You don't give a testimony for Christ if you're a non-Christian. So, again, this just completely disproves the pre-tribulation rapture, beloved. Now, more about being delivered up from the book of Mark, Mark 13, 10. And the gospel must first be published among all nations before the rapture or this fake flyaway but when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do you premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given to you in that hour, 
which is the hour of temptation. It's a span of time that speak ye, for it is not you that speak, but the Holy Spirit. Now, if you're not a Christian, the Holy Spirit is, is not going to speak to, to, uh, through you to others that are on the earth at that time. Again, this is another proof that, you're, that Christians are still here on the earth, beloved. Now, does this sound like a rapture? No, it's just the opposite. This is when we as Christians get to be a testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ in front of the whole world. Our destiny is to stand against the Antichrist and not fly away like a coward. And these are a few examples of them below. Uh, these, are, these are they which were not defiled with woman, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb with, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and the Lamb. These above did not worship the Antichrist as Christ and did not believe in the rapture. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Again, all of these verses prove that Christians are still here on earth when they're delivered up and not gone in a pre-tribulation rapture. You just can't have uh, both of these, right? Um, this is just absolute proof that Christians are here. These are not non-Christians. Revelation 17, 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Revelation 6, 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them which were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, to sell not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell upon the earth? These above are all examples uh, and types of the time of Jacob's trouble. Do you have a testimony, beloved? Or are you just moaning? This is, the destiny, this is the destiny of the true saints of God below. But take heed yourselves in Mark 13, 9, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues you shall be beaten, and you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake for a testimony against them. And I won't repeat these verses. I've already went through these um, now, the above verses are speaking about the Holy Spirit going, uh, speaking through you when you're delivered up before the Antichrist in the hour of temptation. The pre-tribulation rapture believers claim that the Holy Spirit will be gone from the earth at this time. How can this verse be accomplished if the Holy Spirit is gone? Uh, answer, it's impossible. The Holy Spirit is not gone from anywhere. I mean, he's ubiquitous. How can you remove something that is ubiquitous, beloved? Now, this, this, this is just such a stretch, uh, saying that all, all of uh, that this happened during the time that that Titus marched through Jerusalem. This was what Jesus was speaking about: the end of the world, beloved. Not even close. No cigar. Now, let's go to Jeremiah thirty twenty three. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with a fury continuing, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he hath done it, until he hath performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it. Now the great wedding is about to take place. Which bride will you take to wife? Now, I want to go over, you know, a little bit of the uh, uh, history of Jacob and, and the uh, pillar, Jacob's, the, Jacob's ladder and the pillar, the rocks that he slept on when this dream was given to him. And it's, it's really interesting because this stone of scone is still here, and it's where all the kings uh, of, of, 
of uh, Great Britain have been, it's the coronation stone. It sits under the throne. And this stone has is, is, uh, been in place ever since Jacob slept on it that night. Isn't that, that's just a wonderful thing, beloved. So let's go over these verses really quick. And in Genesis 32, 28, and he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince thou hast power with God and with men, and has prevailed. This is that's the meaning of of, uh, of Israel. It's the prince that prevailed with God. Genesis thirty five fourteen, and Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering thereon, and he poured out oil thereon. Genesis forty nine one. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which will befall you in the last days. Yep, beloved, Jacob was a prophet. And um, Genesis forty-nine twenty-four. But his bow abode in his strength and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. Uh from thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. This is talking about Jacob's pillar. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? And here's where we find uh, Jacob's ladder in Genesis 28, 11, and the, where the stone of Scone, Scotland, is found. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set, and he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in his place to sleep. And he dreamed, behold, a ladder set forth on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And now this is, um, this is, you know, this is speaking about the kingdom of the kingdoms of heaven, and the kingdoms of the earth, beloved. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Jacob, and the land whereon. Thou liest, I will give thee and give it uh, in to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and all to the east and to the north, to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all of the families of the earth be blessed. Now, beloved, this is speaking... Um, this is speaking about the 12 tribes of Israel, not just one tribe, Judah. This is speaking about all the 12 tribes of Israel, right? And any time the name Jacob is used, uh, is speaking about the whole, the whole house of Israel in, in that sense. It's the literal natural seed of Jacob. And right now the house of Israel and the house of Judah are split. And you must not lose track of that. I'll do a, a special video on this uh, later on. So let's finish this up here. And, and, be, and behold, I am with thee, and I will keep thee in all thy places, whether thou goest, and I will bring thee again unto this land, for I am, will not leave thee. And I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew not. Okay, beloved, that's the end of this video. I hope your day is going uh, smoothly. And much love to you. And stay in his word every day, beloved. Every day in it is a good day. And things just go better when you start your day off with the word of the Lord. Thank you, beloved.